You know the story of Icarus and how he flew too close to the sun and melted his wings? Well, I flew too close to the Tiger Racer's sun and basically melted my keyboard. After hours of leaving my switches and hopping into the Tiger Racer, actually, I think I'm getting ahead of myself. Lube, lube, lube. Ask any keyboard person a question and they'll tell you if the answer is lube. Switch is too scratchy? Lube. Screen's crunchy? Lube. You're now in debt because you spent all your money on keyboard parts? Also lube. Hi, welcome back to the channel. In my last video, I set out on the journey to create the lightest tactile switch. Honestly, probably one of the dumber ideas I've made in my life. I mean, the spring shop was a great idea, but I just had to go and ruin it by trying to lube them. Now, before you give in the peer pressure like I did and try lubing your switches, let me tell you, lubing is an extremely time-consuming process, and I had to do it twice. After a bit of research from the big man himself, I set out on Crytox 205 Grade 0. This is basically the gold standard for switch lubing, but it's honestly more out of necessity than preference. People actually recommend Tribosis 3204 for tactile switches and reserve Crytox for linears. However, that stuff is impossible to find from any major sites. Even for Crytox, you have to go to specialty shops in order to get this stuff. The version they sell on Amazon is only Grade 2. Sometimes the Grade 0 you see is actually Grade 2 mixed with a different oil in order to try and recreate Grade 0. I felt like I was part of a drug ring when people told me to look on Reddit in order to find someone selling this stuff. Additionally, in the process of figuring out which loop to use, I also stumbled upon filming. Filming is meant to improve the sound of the housing, but I thought it'd be a bit too extra for this project. However, the loop kit I chose came with film, so I gave it a shot. When working with tactiles, there's a bit of contention about whether or not the lube, leaves, and feet of the switch. A good idea is to try both and see which one you like better. After all, it's all preference. Here's a small comparison between the two. Sound-wise, a fully loop switch definitely sounds better, and I thought it still felt okay, so that's what I went with. What the? Long story short, you can't tell how the whole keyboard is going to feel just by testing two switches. Luckily, I only lubed half my keys, so I swapped those out and we did the whole process. Honestly, I'm not happy with this one either. It sounds really good, but something about the difference in feel really threw my typing off. After a couple weeks of practice, I'm almost back to where I was before. However, my accuracy is still kind of terrible. I think the problem lies in that the spring no longer has enough force to push my finger back up after pressing a key. Basically, I need to change my entire typing style just to adjust to this keyboard. If you consider going pro on type racer, perhaps you should reconsider looping your switches. I definitely enjoy the feel and sound improvements of lubed, but not saving over 100 words per minute is going to take some time to get used to. However, just like last time, I have a secret weapon planned. Behold my impulse purchase of the week, Gatoron Optical Browns. Now, there's two ways this video could go. One, I could spend three hours leaving this keyboard and also end up hating it. Or two, I could just accept that you can't turn Gatoron Browns into the ultimate tactile switch. Looping is an extremely time-consuming process, and I had to do it twice. Thrice. I had to do it thrice. Anyways, here are the switches spring swapped and filmed.
I really like the way they feel so far, so hopefully I don't ruin them. I'm not fully leaving this time as I learned my lesson with Melty Keys. I think this is what looping correctly must feel like. When I type abnormal pace, they feel almost identical. I have to really slow down my key press before I can tell that the loop ones are a bit smoother than the regular ones. I can't hear much of a difference in the before and after, but it's there if you listen closely. I've shown a more regular Gatoron browser test so that I can rule this out to being a better lubing technique instead of the optical switches, but I guess that'll have to be for the next video. By then, I'll have assembled all the switches that I want to test. Uh, look, I don't have a problem, okay? It's, it's for the YouTube video. Trust me. But that's all for this one. Make sure you get subscribed so you don't miss my next video and what I hope is the conclusion of my journey in making the ultimate tactile switch. My wallet honestly cannot handle much more of this. Thanks for watching.